Hi guys, and welcome to the first of many scientific study videos for EMB 140 General Plant Ecology. I'm Nate Emery, the instructor for the course, and each week I'll be walking you through some kind of interesting study or ecological story uh, that explored an aspect of plant ecology. Now, uh, except each week, except for the week of the midterm, there will be one of these videos on Gaucho Space for you to watch. Uh, there are short little videos about a scientific study, uh, and the material presented in these uh, is fair game for the midterm and the final in, in the course. Um, so let's get started. So today's experiment is an old, very old, classic experiment by Joseph Priestley, uh, who was a British chemist from the 18th century. Uh, now, before I begin, this guy, this guy was pretty cool. He did a lot of uh, interesting experiments back then, uh, and he had this really awesome quote that I wanted to share with you guys. I think it defines science as a whole and kind of the drive to ask questions. And the quote is, in, com in completing one discovery, we never fail to get an imperfect knowledge of others, of which we can have no idea before, so that we cannot solve one doubt without creating several new ones. And this is basically how a scientist thinks. Coming up with one question, answering that, probably generates 30 or 40 more. Depending on research funding, you can only answer so many. Uh, so let's dive right into it. So a little bit of background. What did we know um, by the time Priestley was working? So by the 1770s, uh, what do we know about plants and photosynthesis? Well, we didn't know much. Um, so first thing we knew was um, some experiments done by John Baptista van Helmont in the 1600s. Uh, and he f discovered basically the importance of water to plant growths. You might think this is pretty uh, basic, but they really didn't know why plants grew. Uh, so what this guy did was he actually grew a willow tree uh, and measured the weight of the willow tree and the soil um, over, I think it was about five years, and he found that the plant increased in weight, but the soil uh, decreased in weight, but not enough to compensate for the amount of weight the willow increased. So he thought it was the water that he was adding to the plant was being transmutated in the wood. So not exactly accurate. Uh, plants don't grow just because of water. Um, not long after, there was another, there was a Brit by the name of Woodward in 1690. So he grew plants in um, different kinds of water and soil and found that the plants in soil did much better than if you did, if you grew them just in water. So it wasn't necessarily water, and basically he's saying that vegetables are not formed of water, uh, but of a certain peculiar terrestrial matter. So something else is letting these plants grow. So that's kind of what we know today. Um, so now we're in the mid-1700s. Uh, Joseph Priestley is a British chemist, and he's really interested in gas. What are the different uh, compounds that exist in air? Uh, so naturally, he started playing with fire. Um, and his first experiment was uh, looking at a candle in a bell jar. So his initial observation was that, that prompted his whole experiment, was he placed a candle inside a bell jar. This is a glass container. Uh, and basically sealed it up with wax and water at the base. And he's noticed that this candle was extinguishing itself. Um, now, how does how does that, what what is this candle doing to the air? Why does it go out on its own? So he hypothesized this is can, that this candle was corrupting the air around it. Uh, so what he did, he's like, all right, well, this corrupts the air. Let me try and make it better. Let's try and improve the air. So he tossed a plant inside. He put a mint plant inside. And lo and behold, the candle stayed lit for 10 days longer than before. So now the plant is doing something to the air to counteract the, an the actions of the candle. So this, his follow-up question is, what is the plant doing to the air? Now, this time around, Priestley put a little mouse in the bell jar, and he found that the mouse didn't do so well uh, with the candle alone. So the candle went out, and the mouse died. Not a great situation. So he puts a plant in there, puts a plant inside, the mouse survives, and the candle stays lit. So thus he concluded that the plant is counteracting the fire's effect on air and replenishing it for the mouse to use. Thus, the mouse survives in the presence of the mint plant. So in summary, it's a very small study, basically he found that plants are purifying the air or restoring the air to a better state. So the candle goes out, you put inside a plant, and the plant keeps the air replenished. Um, and the same goes with putting a mouse inside a jar, uh, which we all know would be using up the oxygen. Uh, by putting a plant inside, it counteracts that, 
and adds oxygen back in. Now, many scientists consider this to be basically the initial discovery of oxygen through uh, the process of photosynthesis. This was kind of the basic plant ecology back in the day. Now, yes, so like I said, the conclusion purified the air and has been credited with discovering oxygen, which is a, a main product of photosynthesis. He published this in 1781 in a huge uh, volume, 324 pages long, called Experiments and Observations on Different Kinds of Air. I just thought it was interesting to consider the idea of what is a different kind of air. Um, and just for fun, when you're looking at pictures for candles online, uh, you come across this crazy Icelandic artist, I think, who makes creepy little skeletons when you melt down a cat candle. Uh, thanks for listening. See you later.